leukemia is far and away the most common cancer in kids. It's usually an acute leukemia um, that comes on quickly and um, once it presents itself, you have to treat it quickly. But overall, it's highly curable with cure rates between 80 and 90%. We have white blood cells that fight infection. We have red blood cells that carry oxygen. Everyone knows the red blood cells and the platelets that clot the blood. And what happens in leukemia is those baby white blood cells, a very immature white blood cell, starts growing out of control. It doesn't grow up into a normal white blood cell. It's kind of stuck at this immature stage and grows out of control, and then it fills up the bone marrow, and then there's no room to make normal red blood cells, normal white blood cells, normal platelets, and then kids can struggle with bone pain, and bleeding, infection. I think all parents feel better when they understand what's going on, so ask questions, ask about the medicines, ask for the blood test results, start to learn about the leukemia, because uh, I think then the parents, the more involved they are, the more they know what questions to ask, and they're looking for things at home when we're not with the kids. So I think it makes for a better treatment when the parents are involved. So usually I tell the parents, expect to be here for a month. We're going to treat your child with a handful of medications, given systematically over this first month. Then we clear out the leukemia, their blood counts get better, we send them home, and then we bring them back. And most of the rest of the treatment's outpatient. So usually I kind of gear parents up for that first month being hard, intensive, inpatient. And then they learn more about the disease, the blood tests, they get to know us and the nurses, and usually by the end of that first month, everyone's more comfortable with the plan. They can feel weak, definitely. They can feel nauseous, um, and their hair is going to fall out, so they may feel different than their other kids their age. And the nice thing about the kids is they don't fake it. When they're feeling okay, they're running around playing um, and having fun, and when they don't feel well, they're kind of quiet and laying around and less energetic. Kids are resilient. They're in good shape. They haven't eaten McDonald's for 40 years. Their, their hearts work, their lungs work. So they tend to handle chemotherapy a lot better than adults would. Kids are not just little adults. They're different in their physiology. They grow differently. They're different at different stages. And pediatricians understand that, and people who work with kids understand that, and not everyone does. So. You can imagine if your child's going to be treated uh, for something that's severe, like a cancer, or a leukemia, or lymphoma, they're going to need pediatric radiologists to look at the x-rays, pediatric surgeons to make assessments and do surgery, pediatric oncologists to administer uh, chemotherapy. So it's very important to have all those members of the team uh, understanding kids. We know you. We don't ask you every visit. Tell me, tell me what's wrong with Johnny again. Or, you know, bring me up to speed. It's not like that. We know Johnny. We know your si the sisters' names. We know what grade they're in school. It, it's nice personal attention.